today, hi everyone, today we are going to continue in Aunt Teresa's book with the story of when Grandpa Louis Wilhelm came to America. This is his, in his words, through Teresa's writings, we get to hear the story of when he, his first years here. And a lot more than that. I feel like I know her through the book, just how she explains things. I just love these people. So let's get into the story. <laughs> Okay, so he was homesick in New York in his one room. This is what happens next. I went on to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and worked there a while. I decided to go to St. Vincent's College in Westmoreland County, Pennsylvania. There I could complete my studies and especially perfect myself in the English language. For a time, I even decided to study for the priesthood. We had good times there as well as work and study for there were woods nearby as well as large fields and playgrounds. But I finally made the decision to get into some business for myself and to eventually marry and raise a good family. I was the last in my line and I had lost my inheritance. To make a fresh start in the new world became my ambition. I went farther west and began trading up and down the Mississippi in a flatboat. I went into partnership with a man named Schwartz. Here, too, is where I met my friend Charles Hoffman. The flatboat, with its wide deck and little cabin, was like a country store with general merchandise. We bought, sold, and traded at every little town and wharf. We fished in the river and sometimes tied the boat and went hunting possums and coon in the woods that adjoined the shore. I had a little dog that was a great help at these times. I also learned to play the banjo fairly well and to sing some of the southern songs. I had learned to play a little on the violin and piano while in college. <laughs> I can just picture him going down the Mississippi singing his southern songs on his banjo. <laughs> Doesn't he sound like a neat guy? I had learned the English language well by this time, with very little accent. My habit of meeting people at the mill in Germany stood me in great stead. I had always been a quiet talker and a very cheery, optimistic temperament. And my motto was, honesty is the best policy. So after two or three years, I began to have quite a sum of money saved up, as money went in those days. I decided to go out west to Los Angeles, California with my friend Charles Hoffman. He was honest as the day is long. I bought out that partnership and was now on my own. That was about 1888 or 1889. I opened up a grocery store on the corner of 9th and Main, and I was about 25 years old at the time. I had sent for my sister while I was still in Pennsylvania. She worked for some time in New York and Hoboken, New Jersey. A school friend, a Mr. John Kind, followed her out from Germany a few years later, and she married him and settled down in New York and Hoboken. She had four children, George, Mary, Margaret, and John. I carried on a very successful grocery business with Mr. Charles Hoffman to deliver the groceries, a Miss White, who worked as the bookkeeper, and I would take orders in every part of the then small city. I drove a beautiful white speckled horse, Peacock, and a light two-wheeled cart. It was while taking orders down at the John J. Maxey Orange Grove home of 25 acres that I met my future wife, Katie. We went out with many a merry picnic crowd or had delicious Sunday dinners at the Maxey home, after which we all played croquet or, if it was cooler, Parcheesi in the house. Or there was piano music and singing. We were married in St. Vibiana's Cathedral in June 1892 and have lived happily ever after. And Papa concluded his story and smiled over at Mama. That is what I say, Wilhelm, she said, her face happy, yet with a couple of tears welling up in her sympathetic gray eyes. And now, said Papa in his cheerful way, we will take a trip to Hemet. Get on my knees, two of you at a time, start, starting with Alma and Walter. Baby Gladys was sound asleep in her little bed. And up and down, Papa bounced them on his knees, calling out the different towns on the way to Hemet. Then Angela and Leo had their turn, then Laura and Carl, then Louis and I, big as we were. He would call out various camps he stopped at on his wagon trips, as well as the towns that the train went through. Now we are going through Clearwater, he would boom. Choo, choo, choo. Now we are in La Miranda. Now Fullerton. Choo, choo, choo. Chuckity, 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 and on and on through the towns, ending up with Paris, Valverde, Coyote Pass, Hemet, Pleasant Valley Ranch. <laughs> and in 
and to the end of each trip, down he would let us fall to the floor. And at the very last, our mother had a short, gentle little ride on his knees, too. My best boy of them all, she would say, giving his shoulder a loving pat. And with a hearty kiss all around from Papa and Mama, we were sent off to an early sleep. Hey everybody, I'm editing my videos that were on my old channel that have music. I'm taking the music off of the beginnings and the ends of these first, I think I had four videos like this. So, uh, yeah, I just want to jump in and let you know that's why some of them are a little cut off. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. This is so fun. I've got a lot more information and I'm going to make more videos. Take care everyone. See you next time.